Nation. We continue with our signing day coverage on February 7th. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. We just spoke with Gary Bohannon, the new BYU quarterback. And now we welcome in the head coach of BYU football to discuss, yes, of course, the new signees, some return missionaries. We may talk a little Big 12 BYU football schedule as well. He is Kalani Satake. Coach, welcome back to the show. Gentlemen, how are you doing? Great. I almost forget in February that there's a signing day because you signed <laughs> yeah. so many in December. But today you signed two very good players, which is exciting. Out of Oakland, where you went on your mission. Yeah, yeah, and uh, really good players. And, and uh, I think they have the versatility to do a lot of different things too. So um, I, I think, uh, you know, they can get after the pass, you know, after the passer too. So they can get after the quarterback. And I think uh, that, that'll help us out a lot. And I, I think probably more ready than, than uh, a, a lot of other incoming freshmen. But. Mm. Uh, we're really excited about adding those guys into our group. No question the recruiting efforts have been extended. And uh, I know your guy, Jay Hill, has has really kind of led that charge. So now to see the fruits of the efforts of Jay and the entire staff, not to mention yourself, I know you've been gone a lot. What do you think of the overall signing class now that uh, it, it's come to fruition? Well, I, I like it in, in all, all three phases. But I, I do like the fact that we're able to – Offensively, uh, we had some guys that we were able to develop, and we retained some players. You know, so I think the the guys that are returning is gonna it's gonna be really good for us. And we actually added you guys just talked to Gary, you added Gary and some others that, that I think would provide some competition. Defensively, we needed to, to get um, the the talent up there so we can get competition going. I think I think development needs competition, and when uh, guys can't feel too comfortable in their their position, their spot, we already we already see the uh, the uh, the urgency to get better and the urgency to try to win their spot. And that's going to be uh, really exciting when, when we get to spring ball, but more, more exciting when we get towards the off season, the summer and get to the, to the fall camp. But uh, I think competition is a big part of development, big part of our program. And in order to do that, you have to go recruit the best. And I'm, I'm proud of the guys and, and uh, the coaches, you know, everyone that, that went out there and worked really hard to get this class together. The defense has certainly been bolstered 19 of the 26 on that side of the ball. Offensively, obviously, there were some struggles there. You've changed a couple of uh, position coaches there. Not as many players on that side of the ball, so you feel like you have the guys in the room already that are ready to improve this year. You didn't need to add a ton. Yeah, I, I think there's the, the disconnect on, on that side. We, we, we thought the, the offensive line was going to be a huge, um, you know, a, a huge strength for our program, not just on the offensive side, but overall. And uh, a lot of that has to do with, with uh, allowing the culture to thrive players to compete and you know we, we need to make a change uh, same thing with tight end we just felt like there's was, there's was a change that we need to make there it's nothing against the men that, that, that were there they're good people right but the uh, it's about the the product and what the expectations that we have and and actually the players that are out there I think there's a high expectation from the fans for us to get back to what we're doing and and, and having our our, our strengths become our strengths again and, and uh, looking at it and reviewing it we see that we're not that far off we just need a, a few tweaks here and there and some competition but also looking at the opportunity to sign guys like like Joe Brown who's going to be an amazing old lineman for us and uh, and some development of some younger guys but also retaining guys like Connor Pay and and and, uh, and Kime to come back and help our team lead uh, Caleb Etienne those guys are going to be amazing so uh, the whole group I think is going to be fine as far in terms of uh, talent is just a matter of uh, making sure that they're all on the same page and that we're we're thriving together you know what I mean and so I I, I like the addition of the players that we have but plus you're also looking at the guys that we have coming in as return missionaries we, we know that uh, we've retained quite a bit of talent on the you know with the receiver position and tight ends and even at running back even with losing eight and we got LJ and the rest of the group back um, it, it's more about uh, the incoming uh, return missionaries that we're really excited about as well. You mentioned the competition that a guy like Gary Bohannon will naturally bring to the quarterback's room to push Jake and the others. What excites you the most about what Gary could potentially do at BYU? And what's what's the message you gave to him uh, knowing that he's going to have to come in and compete? Well, we had to defend him before. So, you know, that, that there's a – I think when you look at the his, his strengths, it, being able to move and be able to create with his feet – um, his athleticism and uh, the, other, the other thing is that he's very um, familiar with our offense and so the I think this is a different one and done and I, I think we put a lot of pressure on Keaton to get to know the offense as soon as, you know, sooner than later and and we try to, to you know f formulate an opportunity for him to, to learn it all 
Uh, Gary already knows this offense. I mean, he'll probably be humble and just say he's still going through some things, but the vocabulary, all those things, it's the same. Because he was with Grimes. Because apparently. he was with Grimes, and that's what Grimes did there. And, and you know, he's he's got this great connection with, with A-Rod and, and with the rest of the staff. I think he's going to be in a really good spot. You guys have pl spent plenty of time with him just to see that, that he's got great leadership and he's humble. He's not, he didn't come here ask, uh, demanding anything. He just asked for a chance to compete and, and uh, you know, the competition is going to be fun, fun, man. That's, you, you want, you want greater, great, uh, better production. You got to have better competition. And, and um, I think it's going to be exciting to watch these guys get after it. Let's talk about some of those uh, return missionaries. Receiver Cody Hagan uh, might highlight the list. This dude's a baller. Yeah, and, and, and tons of speed. When you look at, it, at what he can do, uh, we're excited. It seems like, in a way, the two years took forever. But, um, <laughs> but you know, now that it's come around, we're excited about him returning. And then also, uh, and, you know, with, with McKenzie coming back, too. Uh, we'll, we'll get um, Cody coming up back soon. And again, a couple more months, but um, it's good to have uh, Dom with us right now. Is the expectation for a guy like Cody to kind of slow roll it that first fall? Like, give him a year to kind of get his legs under him? Well, I, I think or should we expect, hey, we expect some catches? I mean, I, I think there's a, there's a role that he can have. I, I, it's always hard when you're, when you're banking on a return missionary to come and, and, and provide uh, game time right now. I think he's just going to be the icing on the cake. We, yeah. You look at all the guys that are returning. I mean, we even moved Loaded. people to tight end. So yeah, that's a great a, room. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of talent there. What we're hoping is that he will come in, uh, work with, with the time that he has. If you know anything about him, this guy's got tons of speed, tons of talent, and so many great skills that uh, it's going to be really hard to keep these guys off the field. And I think... Um, yeah, he, he'll 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 be really really he'll be welcomed by all the, the by the entire group, especially the quarterbacks. Let's stay with the wide receiver theme and speak about Dominic McKenzie. The McKenzie mm -hmm. brothers are now officially together at BYU. Did you watch Strange Brew growing up? Is that a, the McKenzie brothers? Is that the Canadian? Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. The, it's the McKenzie brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, uh, and I smell stuff. a poster day, bro, Burke. Yeah. <laughs> with root beer. Yeah. Except for them, they're from St. George instead of Canada. But yeah. A yeah. little different. <laughs> Slight difference yeah. there. But it's good uh, to get the McKenzie brothers back together. For yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 So do you envision Dom will stay in the wide receiver room, or is he a guy that, because I've heard he's versatile, just like Marcus, like yeah. you want to move him around potentially? Uh, Jay's tried already, and <laughs> Bessie and A-Rod are not giving him up. And Heck I'm yeah. Sure. I mean, you, you look at the the excitement of getting Dom and his speed and Cody and his speed. I mean, there's 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 a lot of uh, possibilities there, and, and I think the offensive, they can be really creative in helping get those guys on the field. Let's talk about the running backs, uh, Pokai and uh, Jovessa back from missions. Yeah, it's great to have uh, another Damuni on the roster. Um, Jovessa's got tons of talent. Uh, up in, comes up to, to us from, from the Logan area, and uh, you know we've known him since he's a baby. It seems like so. Now that he's here, he's gonna he's gonna add to the to the room, especially with losing Aiden. But um, I think he can do some really good things for us. Pokai, uh, Pokai is, and I I know people don't like the comparisons, but he's a lot like Reno Mahe. Um, he, he can he can return. He's played a lot of receiver. He's got uh, he's got so much quickness and burst. So both these guys I think will will add to the team. And Hold on, I, Junior Mahe or Reno? Because those are two different versions of him. Well, I think I think uh, both. If nice. I can, yeah, so, yeah Pokai, Pokai can play, and, and so can Jovessa, and awesome. we're really excited about the group. And I know Harvey's really excited about the overall talent in the, in the running back room. Noah Moiaki was a guy that uh, you and the staff are very excited about when he signed out of high school. He joins that tight ends room. Um, what do you like most about Noah's game, and, and what do you expect from him in these early years back from his mission? Yeah, legacy kid. You know, I played with his dad. Um, Obviously, Moyaki is known that they can play tight end. And uh, what I was really impressed with was his, his uh, ability to play basketball, too. Uh, for some reason, great tight ends can play basketball, you know. And so mm. uh, seeing what he did at AF as a basketball player, the football part, I mean, he, he, he's, he's, a, he's extremely physical. Um, he can play both sides of the ball. And uh, he has soft hands. And so that... that, that I think it will match it really, really well with the, what we want to do with the tight end position here. Always good to have a Hoke, too. Nathan yeah, Hoke. yeah, it's Chris. good to have Nate here. Sisters and, on the gymnastics team, mm -hmm. super athletic. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you know, I played with Hokester, another legacy kid, and uh, I think Nate's a little bit different body type than his dad, but uh, he has the ability to, yeah, I mean, he can, he can play end and backer. It's kind of like a, we'll see what happens in the next little bit, how much he eats if he 
He's more like his dad or his mom. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> what do you envision for Dallin Havea on the defensive line with Jay Hill helping him along there? Yeah, we, we always, we've done this before in the past where you can project. Um, uh, Dallin's played a lot of different positions in high school when he was at Provo. And uh, I think, I think personally, I think he can really get big and play on the line of scrimmage. And uh, that can be a five technique or even a three technique, even inside. Um, he's extremely uh, explosive, has great twitch, and um, great athlete. So I'm, I'm really excited about him being back and watching these guys work out. And you know, I've, I've been gone a lot in recruiting and everything, but seeing these guys move around, I think he's going to fit exactly what we want from the front. And O-lineman Sione Hingano is the uh, last Yeah, Sione's a big-time player out of Chandler. Um, we, we, we knew we had something special and, and, and had to wait, obviously, for the mission. But uh, I think he's going to be really good for us to tackle and kind of gives us some, a little bit of some young guys to work with, knowing that we have a, a good amount of veterans coming back at that position. All right, Kalani Satake is with us on BYU Sports Nation discussing all of the new signees and the return missionaries that are going to have an impact for BYU football in the 2024 season and beyond. Speaking of the 2024 season, you just got the Big 12 football schedule officially released. You've seen the rundown. What do you think of what you're about to face in a new look Big 12? Yeah, I mean, I, I like the conference schedule. I, I've, I've, it's hard to look at that when you when it's good to know it now, but I like I like what we're at the beginning. You know, we start at home. Um, I don't mind going to Wyoming in September, much better than in November, <laughs> so I'll take it, you know. Um, and, and you look at the games, I'm excited about the, the, the way the schedule looks, and, and uh, I think it's going to be exciting getting teams like Kansas State and Provo, uh, you know, we'll go back to Baylor, and, and I think uh, there's going to be some guys excited about that game. There's one know. guy excited about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we've got that. Arizona, you know, coming here, and so... Oklahoma State coming. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of cool things. I think October, end of October, UCF's going to be fun. I think even the, the ASU game is going to be fun. It just I think it worked out kind of kind of a nice way for us. I, I think the uh, it's going to be exciting when we go to Dallas. We, we'll be able to see our fans in a lot of different places too. So uh, I'm really excited about the overall schedule. It's just good to know it now. Before uh, we were kind of I think there's a lot of people wondering where it's going to where the game's going to fit it. And you know I don't mind where the Utah game's at either. You don't mind. No, I, I think it's wherever. Well, I mean, I, I like that they're back on the schedule. That's, yeah. that's all I care about. And, uh, you know, we'll Do you have a preference? Would you have liked it in the traditional final spot in the regular well, season? Well, the weird thing is I think we have a bye before them, and I think they have and a they bye. they do too. Yeah. yeah, so I think maybe maybe everyone's trying to generate a bunch of excitement Two with weeks. the week off. You know? Hey, I don't for know shows if the fans like this, are going to be excited good. about it. Yeah, we, we might have to have like an alumni flag football game or something to, <laughs> to take up the bye week. But it, it, it's a... Uh, Listen, the, the, the conference looks really strong, um, and, and I think that, uh, you know, I'm familiar with, that, group, with that, that, that university, so is Jay, so a lot of guys that are here, uh, a lot of households are excited. It's, it's good to have it back on, on the schedule. And a league game. Yeah. First and, time since 2010. And good to have the... You were the, on the other side of that. Yeah, yeah. And good to have the, 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 um, the conference. I think the conference is going to be stronger, and you're looking at what we're doing and the teams that we're adding, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean... Uh, you know, you look at Pope, it's like basketball just got even even harder adding all those teams back. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun for us in football. Kalani, it's been great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us on Signing Day. We wish you the best with your emotions in the Super Bowl this weekend. Too. You're a Niners fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Andy's um, your Andy, guy. Go Chiefs. Well, go well, Chiefs. I mean, it's just kind of a messed up thing because I was texting Andy and texting uh, uh, Fred. Fred. And, but I really wish him the best. I, I don't know, man. I, I'm, a, I, yeah, I'm a Niners fan since I was a, since I was a kid, you know, but... Um, you know, but I don't think we can't we can go wrong here. And then as a winner, well, you know, I'm a but Taylor, go Chief. I'm a Taylor Swift fan too. So <laughs> as you look at all this stuff. I think it's going to be fun all together. It's just going to be going to be nice, a nice event. So we'll see what It'll happens. Be fun. BYU is representing. That's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> Way to be right down the middle. Diplomatic It'll approach. Be a nice hey, event. yeah, yeah. Well, I got to run for office someday. You never know. Kalani <laughs> for city council. He in never Provo spoke in 2044. <laughs>